And you freaking out over what silver's doing? <laughs> Do you see it break $22 an ounce and think, uh, the ship has left the harbor. It's never going to return. And if you're accumulating silver or wanting to, what do you do? Do you buy? Do you hold on to your fiat and wait? Well, I'm calling for a significant short-term pullback in silver prices. And I'm going to tell you here on this video when I believe that's going to happen and what will cause it. And after that happens... I think that will mark the best silver buying opportunity we have ever seen in this millennium. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Silver is up, gold is up, but silver, oh my goodness, have you ever seen such a spike in silver prices? It's amazing. And frankly, it's a lot of fun too. I mean, my mining stocks are up close to 50% in less than five months. I'm pretty jacked. And, you know, I'm long gold and silver. I am a hardcore stacker and prepper. And I am convinced that this stuff right here is what you want to have in your portfolio. But what about short term? And, and what about this recent run up we've watched this week? It's been epic. Well, first, let me say I may be a, a, a financial coach to several of you out there who subscribe to my Yankee uh, Canon membership, but I'm not a certified financial advisor. So again, this is more for entertainment purposes. Please do your own research and uh, you know, just be really careful with what you do with your, with your money. But I am going to tell you what would Yankee do or what is Yankee doing, especially in the short term. So I am convinced that a pullback is coming, and I think it's a significant one. And there are several factors that are driving that belief. Number one, deflationary fears. Guys, we're seeing renewed lockdowns, whether you agree with them or not. It is spreading throughout the nation. Up here in New Hampshire, we're almost like in a bubble. It's like one of the best states to, to live in in this nation when it comes to this this, this you know, virus and the effects of it. So the lockdowns are occurring. Uh, you, you know what's happening this month. The CARES Act ends. At the end of this month, I think actually in about a week uh, at the time of this video, the CARES Act is over. That's 600 bucks a week, which is a lifeline for some, a lot of people actually. That ends, okay? Unemployment is going to spike especially due to the uh, change, or I should say the, the end of the requirement for businesses who took those PPP loans. They had to keep their people employed in order for it to be, uh, you know, really not a loan, but a grant. Well, that ends, okay? Once they've gotten, you know, once they've kept their employees, they don't have to keep them anymore. And I think we're going to see unemployment go way up. And basically, the results of this recession haven't really hit full on. And it's going to in the next few months. We're going to see companies, commercial real estates, even banks start to have some serious problems. So with all that, you're going to see deflationary fears. Okay, I also think there's going to be a, a resurgence with the trade war with China. I think that's going to blow up. And I also believe that one of the reasons why I think a pullback's coming is the easing of liquidity that the Fed has done. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. So I think while I know we're all in this, you know, uh, silver delirium right now with what's happening, and, and it's exciting, it really is, don't get me wrong, I really truly expect silver to just shoot up into triple digits at some point. So I'm excited about it, but I urge you to stay objective here. Think clearly. Don't let your you know emotions get the better of you. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what Yankee's doing, okay? So let me get into a little bit more details about what I think is gonna happen. First of all, I think there is a big downside risk in the short term for silver. 
and also gold. But, you know, just let me run through these arguments with you. First thing I wanted to mention is the fundamentals, okay? We're looking at the highest levels in seven years for silver and around eight years for gold. Highest levels, guys. <laughs> that that right there should, you know, make you wonder if a pullback isn't going to occur. But also realize this. The Fed has tapered liquidity recently tapered we were we were at a, a i think a three trillion dollar run rate it's now down to one trillion dollars that is a, a reduction okay in what the fed has done with liquidity but the government is still spending they're still creating more debt and that by definition is a taper and we need to be honest here, right? If, if we believe that, you know, printing currency is uh, a, a fundamental reason for prices in precious metals to go up, what is the logical outcome from a taper? Even for the short term, it's down. Now, I think that that, that taper is going to end, okay, in the medium and long term. Absolutely. I'm, I'm convinced of it. And I think precious metals is going to skyrocket. And some people think it, it, you know, silver has skyrocketed. We, we no, we we haven't seen anything yet. But I think the risks with fundamentals are piling up like this <laughs> on the downside. The, the other the other thing that is making me feel that a pullback is imminent, and I'll tell you when soon, is the technicals. Okay, I've seen multiple negative divergences on the daily, weekly, and monthly charts. I've looked at them and it's it's pretty stark. And, and actually the monthly is the thing that is just amazing to me. Uh, we are seeing uh, some of the highest levels since the pre-drop of 2006, 2008, and 2011. And think about these pullbacks back then, right? 2006, we had a pullback of 25%. In 2008, we had a pullback of 35%. 2011's pullback was 50%. All right, so I, I think we're at the same levels of being overbought right now on the technical side as, as those, uh, those times. So can I see a, a 10 to 15% pullback, especially from these incredible levels right now? Yes, I think that's totally logical. So that's the technicals. What about sentiment? <laughs> oh my word, guys. I, you know, you may not think it, but it's bullish right now. In fact, I think it's been uh, more bullish now than, than any time since 2011's peak. And you know, again, I am massively bullish, especially in the medium term and the long term. This The short term... I, I think we're going to see this big correction. And, and to drive that home a little bit more, check out the recent poll I put up on my YouTube channel. I think I think that kind of shows it right there. Look at that. Yeah, the, cha the train has left the station. Woohoo! You know, it's like, mm. that to me shows a radical bullishness. Now, again, I'm, I'm sure people are going to say, Yankee, what are you talking about? You got to be bullish about this. Yes, I am. But... For the short term, I think we have a major pullback coming. So, because because when you you know add up all these data points, you know the fundamentals, the technicals, the sentiment, that's what I see coming. But when? When will that occur? September. There, <laughs> I called it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a month. Uh, I, I may be wrong. Again, this is just a speculative, uh, uh, you know, uh, play on my part. But I think that's when the Fed will turn on the monetary spigot. I think it's going to be, you know, about two months before the November elections. And, and you know, I, I don't know if you know this either, but I, I, I've noticed this. The Treasury has built up a huge cash balance. I think it's normally around 4 billion, you know, billion with a B. It's now north of 1.6 trillion. To me that looks 
a lot like preparation for some massive, you know, helicopter drop. I think there's going to be another, you know, uh, check in the mail. There's going to be maybe tax rebates or spending on infrastructure. I don't know what it's going to be. But already, you know, I can sense that Congress and and the Fed and, and everybody, even the president, wants a stimulus package. This is going to happen. And, and I even think that bolsters my contention that stagflation is going to begin at the end of this year. You think about it, all that money printing that's going to happen, all that money going into the economy while the economy continues to suffer. That, that, that's, a, that's stagflation potential right there. And I think it's, it's going to be like 1970s, in, in the 70s, which if you know history was incredibly bullish for gold and silver. So anyway, that was a side note. But I do believe that deflationary fears are what we need to be thinking about right now. Even though the Fed is effectively tapering, it, it, it's going to change. I clearly see these uh, deflationary fears leading to another stock market drop, another liquidity crisis, and that spilling into gold and to a larger extent silver, just like it happened back in March. Do you remember? I think that's coming again. The second wave that I've talked about in prior videos. So I'm just asking you to just take a deep breath. You know, check your uh, emotional bias at Yankees Channel Door. <laughs> you know, because yeah, I'm. I'm hearing it from several of my good friends in the community, right? They're saying, come on, Yankee. He, you said there may, would be a pullback. It's over 22. There is no pullback. <laughs> you stupid old dude. <laughs> Since when did prices going up mean a pullback can't happen? That's like saying, you know, what goes up never comes down. I mean, that's silly, guys. That's that's ignoring history. Remember, you fanatics, and I, I group myself in that camp. So I'm a fanatic when it comes to precious metals. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this to myself as well as you. Nothing goes up in a straight line. Think about it. The definition of an upward trend is higher highs and higher lows. Higher highs and higher lows. How do you get the higher lows unless you get a pullback, right? It's healthy and it always happens. Case in point, well, let's, let's take a look at the historic pullbacks in uh, gold, okay? Uh, during some of the more uh, you know recent uptrends that we had. I'm just going to run through these and, and think about this, all right? May to June 2006, a 23% drop. March to October 2008, 35% drop. February to April 2009, 14% drop. November 2009 to February 2010, 15% drop. June to July 2010, 9% drop. December 2010 to January 2011, 9% drop. April to May 2011, 7% drop. Guys, this was during the bull market of 2001 to 2011. And I'm just showing you between you know, 2006 on. There was plenty of other drops earlier than, than 2006 during that period, but I don't want to cover that. But, but let's look at the more recent run-up from 2015. July to December 2016, 18% drop. April to July 2017, 7% drop. September to December 2017, 9% drop. January to August 2018, 13% drop. February to eight, uh, April 2019, 6% drop. September to November 2019, an 8% drop. And, and just last March, we all remember this one, right? A 15% drop. So <laughs> you get the idea. You know, to, to say that there, you know, we're not going to have any significant pullbacks. It's just going to go up, up, and up, 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 up. That's that's just sheer lunacy, folks. <laughs> I am insanely bullish on precious metals, guys. I've stacked hundreds of ounces of silver. I think I'm up to uh, 23 and a half ounces of gold. I love this stuff. 
And I think it's going to eventually just rocket up. But, you know, and, and you know, we we could see all-time highs. we got a ways to go with silver, right? I mean, we're not the 50 yet. Gold is pretty much there, in, at least in nominal terms. But I believe we're going to see a pullback around 15%, maybe as high as 20% in the short term. And I think it's going to happen in just about six weeks. And I'm just going to, like I said at the very beginning, I think that the best buying opportunity this millennium will be when that pullback happens. Folks, I don't think we'll ever see these prices again. I think once we leave the teens after a pullback, because I do think we're going to get into the teens again on a pull, with a pullback, I think after that, we never see the teens again in silver. Okay, I, we leave that behind forever. So what do I think will launch that uh, after the dip, that, that rise in price? Well, I think there are two things that are going to occur that are going to be monumental. First, not that we haven't seen this before, but the Fed is going to start printing more currency than it has ever printed before. Maybe combined, it is going to blow our minds. It, it's it's going to be just obscene, even more than obscene, even more obscene than it has been, I should say. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing I think we're going to see, and this is this is really huge, guys. This is big time. The Fed is going to start capping bond yields. I've mentioned this before in a prior video. It's huge. But let's go back to the printing. Why? Why are they going to print so much? (laughs) Guys, this is an election year. We will see the Fed do the mother of all helicopter drops before November. I think it's going to coincide with some massive stimulus bill or, or infrastructure bill or whatever they want to call it. It's going to, you know, you know, go through Congress. It's going to be stuffed with pork. The president's going to eagerly sign it. It's going to happen. You know, the, the Fed is going to monetize that. They're waiting to monetize it. They're, they're actually asking. They're almost begging to monetize what the uh, government uh, puts out. And if you think about it, the Fed printed $3 trillion in the three months following March, the last time. I think they're going to blow through 10 or $12 trillion on the balance sheet. And they will literally start buying everything. Literally everything. Stocks included. It will be it, it it's gonna. I keep saying I, I don't even know how to, you know, to say it more uh, uh, dramatically than just blow our minds. It's going to be incredible what we witnessed by the Fed. We ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> now that that fiscal stimulus by the government and the monetary stimulus by the Fed, that is one of the big reasons why I think after this dip we never see uh, these lows again. So what about the cap on bond yields? Because I really think that is probably one of the biggest things that's coming. Uh, Why are they going to do that? Well, I think they have to so they don't expose our U.S. insolvency. Guys, we're insolvent. (laughs) It just people don't realize it. If the interest costs go up, we're screwed. So they need to cap them. But when they cap them, it's game over. See, when they cap bond yields, they're really capping real yields. And, and, and if you go back, go back decades if you want, in gold and silver, especially gold, but also in silver, you'll see that gold and silver are inversely related to real yields. So when real yields are capped, all right, and they can't go any higher, gold and silver go up, way up. So that's huge, the capping of, of um, bond yields, and it's coming. It, I, I think, see, I think for the money printing to take effect before the election, they got to have some months ahead of that, maybe a couple months. So I'm expecting September to be the month that, that the Fed does this. 
And uh, I think that could be the bottom because I think that, that for the stock for the stock market, because I think stocks are going to go down dramatically. And I think gold and silver are going to react as well. Um, I, I just think it's going to be another pullback before it's off to the races. And I don't think we'll see those lows again. But the cap is key. All right. So, in fact, that's what Japan did. They capped in. They capped their uh, bond yield. So that's what's going to happen here. I think it's going to be game over. So, what should you do, <laughs> other than just take a breath and relax? Those of you out there that think you've missed the boat, right? You think it's it's too late for you. Well. I don't think so. What I'm doing is I am keeping my Yankee powder dry. I am getting ready to really jump on this next pullback. We should welcome these uh, dips, uh, anything that we experience in these next six weeks. I really believe that we should be happy about that. They're incredible buying opportunities. We know what's coming and it's coming with, I think it's coming the end of this year. So this is a great opportunity to buy more silver. Now, of course, I'm not sure what that means for premiums. They are still rather high, but you know what? Premium shmemiums. The next time we get this pullback, I'm buying silver. I will be back buying silver. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this rather uh, impromptu uh, video. I wanted to get this out really quick because, you know, it's been crazy, right? <laughs> we had to talk about it. Uh, so yeah, just leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're doing. Are you buying, holding, or selling? Please don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do the selling. Uh, if you're, you know, buying right now, that's fine. If you're dollar cost averaging, I get it. But if you're holding like me, waiting for the next major pullback, let me know down there in the, in the uh, comments. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.